Right, hello. Thought I'd do a little look in the greenhouse because there's uh, a few seeds and a few plants I've been moving about. So let's have a look inside. We have got a few of the palms that I overwintered indoors. We brought them out into the greenhouse to get them used to some stronger light levels before uh, they go outside for summer. So hopefully just a slightly diffusion through the, the polycarbonate roof and the, the glass, which is a little bit mucky to be fair. I haven't cleaned it at all over winter or spring, so it's not letting 100% light through, which is probably not a bad thing. I don't want to burn stuff too much. So yeah, we've got the bottle palm here. which is uh, done fine over winter indoors as a house plant. It's now really starting to push out a, a new spear. Uh, I don't think that'll be too long away. Maybe a couple of weeks that'll come out. Got a couple of other bigger palms which are indoors over wintering. So we've got a Cyagrus here, which is Cyagrus coronata tag there so it's obviously a, a relative of the, the queen palm but this one done really well as a house plant over winter probably grew a good foot or so on that leaf and a good couple of foot on the center leaf here and it is actually starting to push out a new spear as well so that's done well this is uh, now getting used to some cooler nights in the greenhouse and some warmer days and behind that we've got the tetrasperma elegance which is a double in the pot so that is starting to pump out some growth uh, on the shelf here behind the, the little fan brought out my hibiscus, I just repotted them. Some of them did drop a few leaves over winter. They did seem to keep on flowering and one's still got a flower bud on it. But, um, yeah, lost a few leaves, so hopefully now it's been repotted and getting some better light, that should, uh, they should take off nicely. So they are like the tropical hibiscus. And behind that we've got like a variegated shell ginger, which is recently repotted, so. That should start coming for growth. Um, okay, a lot of these are sort of palm seedlings and whatnot. We've got the Jubaya Chalensis palm seedling there. And a little, little sable miner. And some various aeoniums and whatnot. Just sort of cuttings now establishing and starting to root in um, avocados really start to put out some nice new growth now they're doing well so i've got some seed trays dotted about which are starting to to come in Got some Rubecca here and some various other sort of summer bed and flowers. So they're, they're starting to sprout. So uh, as they get bigger, obviously I'll pop them out in the pots. Um, Ricinus. I brought, that's Amazon actually, I think. Amazon, um, 199 for 15 seeds. So I got two lots, so I got 30 seeds. I think six did not germinate. But the rest have now I started off in little cell packs and popped them out and put them into their own pots now. So they're starting to take off and getting some proper leaves. Obviously you've got the little seed leaves there. So they should uh, start doing well. Um, what else we got? 
Obviously we've got a few canners in here which are really starting to shoot up now with the temperatures rising in the greenhouse. Um, if I have the door shut in here that would get, I don't know, 28, 30 degrees so I just have it open a little bit. So it sits around, I don't know, 25, 26 during the day and that will probably drop to about 10 degrees at night. So it's a good time to start sort of hardening certain things off. One thing that did uh, take me by surprise, this Regersia, which I had in the border last year and got totally decimated by slugs. So uh, at the end of the year, I dug it up and sort of didn't label it and forgot about it and just chucked it in the greenhouse here and that's shot up and starting to look quite nice. So when that gets a little bit bigger, I'll uh, whack that outside. Hopefully get some big leaves on that. Nice sort of uh, palmate, really quite nice looking leaves on them. And then we've got the Tradescanthia, or purple heart plant. Um, they'll go out soon, as soon as we've got any chance of any sort of low temperatures at night. I'll get them out and get through them in the border. Probably take some cuttings again and do that. So I did have a question earlier about collocations and someone said that they'd overwintered them no problem. But as soon as the, the temperatures and light levels went up they started uh, looking a bit rough. Well, if they look something like that, that's normally insect damage. This is why it's not ideal to grow colocasia in a greenhouse unless you've got a, some sort of misting system or you can sort of spray them every day because uh, spider mites are going to be the biggest issue I find with colocasia or any sort of big leaf soft big leafed plant they they want to grow and the insects want to feed on them so yeah i've got uh, just a standard green one here and it's been being attacked looks like aphids but um spider mites are a big issue as well you can really dull the leaves down and just sort of slow their growth right down They'll keep pushing out new leaves, but the leaves won't get big. They don't. They just zap all the energy out of the leaves. So I have got some pink china grown away in here. But again, I think next week we've got food cooler nights. But after that, I'll get them outside because I want to keep a bit of humidity around them. The humidity is definitely going to help spider mites. Again, if you can spray them a couple of times a day or something, that will help. The spider like mites really do like the dry environment. So if you can keep the humidity up, that's going to discourage them. Yeah, so again, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything I've got going on in here. But what was quite nice is I bought a load of... Uh, I don't know if I've still got the tags on any of these. I think I might have removed them, but... I bought loads of these uh, begonias. I think they're what, about 50p a pot. And I'll just, obviously when they die down, I bought them last year, the end of the season last year. And uh, when they die down, I just chucked them to the floor of the greenhouse here. And uh, yeah, most of them are starting to come back quite nicely now, so they can go out again when the, the frosts have truly finished. This one has just gone mad actually. That's doing well already. So yeah, just uh, all sorts going on. Like I said, I can't go for everything, but just a little look. I did have a tetrapanics pup that I dug out of the ground last year. You can see the original growth point sort of died over winter. But then it's popped out again. So I might 
dig a few more up. I've got seven, seven or eight, I'd say, pups around one of my main plants. So I'll dig all them out and pot them up. Then we've got the uh, Mandevilla, which I just kept as a house plant that sat in the kitchen all winter. Dropped a lot of the flowers, obviously, but um, it was growing. You've got some long tendrils here, so I'm just hardening it off to get it used to some cooler nights before I put it outside. But yeah, I think that'll do it. I'm not going to go too in depth about everything. A little dwarf cavendish banana there. Could do with the water. Um, Yeah, that's what the uh, Eurostine looks like. I tried to keep that as a house plant and it did sort of drop all its leaves. So I've brought it back out here and started to get some new leaves come on it. So and yeah, we've got a big tub of ginger down here. This is a variegated Edicium. I think it's Dr. Moy or something like that but yeah I just uh, that obviously sits outside during summer but over winter I just chucked in here and it didn't fully die back you know you've got a couple of sort of dried crispy leaves but some of the main stems have kept going but obviously now with the temperatures we're getting all the new growth starting to pop up and I think I've got some begonias in here as well so that's uh, a ready-made summer planter uh, look at the state of this this is a uh, purple aloe which believe it or not it does sort of turn purple when it's in full sun but um, actually covered in spiders webs it's uh, totally filled that pot, so I might put that in a bigger pot. But that's quite a nice one actually to go outside, it's not, not totally hardy, so that's why it's in the greenhouse over winter. But yeah, I've got some serious spider web going on, but I don't mind spiders in the, in the greenhouse just to keep any pests away. All right. Let's leave it at that. That is the greenhouse. Again, I have explained before, but in case any new viewers, this is a, a home-made greenhouse, which literally I got a load of wooden double glazing from, uh, well, I think it's off Facebook. They wanted. 30 quid for the lot and I often 20 they accepted so for 20 quid I got all the windows and door it did have a cat flap in it so obviously I just put a grill on that with a, a little bit of ventilation but um yeah so I built that sort of two befores framework and then put the windows in a door and here yeah, I already had some luckily had some polycarbonate roof panels which uh, I made it to, to, to fit them and yeah so for the price of about 40 quid I've got a nice double glazed oh well, I say nice it does a job double double glazed greenhouse and that does actually hold the heating quite well um, didn't heat it this year over winter, but certainly didn't get anywhere near freezing in there. So, yeah, suits its uh, purpose, does the job. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.